Yo, what's up, Shelf Squad YouTube channel? Welcome back to a brand new video today. We're going to be doing an early deck profile for Reggie Drago V Star. Reggie Drago V Star is one of the brand new V Star Pokemon coming out in Silver Tempest. And oh boy, does it look good. It lets you copy any dragon Pokemon from your discard pile and use your attacks without needing the energy, which is insane. And there are a lot of dragon Pokemon in the format. And I'm excited to show off my Reggie Drago list early that I have cooked up here. I really thought long and hard about a good way to build. Reggie Drago. There's actually a lot of cool ways you could build it. There's a lot of different engines you could play with it. The engine that I'm going to be running this video is the one that I think I'm going to try out the most and the one that I'm more comfortable with over the other engines. Um, and I'm excited to show off my Reggie Drago list. If y'all are excited for Reggie Drago and if you are excited for Silver Tempest, which is coming out in less than a month, slap a like on the video. And of course, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so you never miss out on an upload. Also, while you're down there, make sure to check out all the lovely sponsors like Atlas Collectibles, which if you get anything at Atlas, use TSS12, the discount code TSS12, and you get yourself a nice juicy 12% discount on your purchase. Also, make sure to go check out Pokex Word down below and complete their daily puzzles. I like doing them. They're good brain exercises. Kind of gets you, like, it's like warming up, basically, for, like, something. Like, you can even use brain exercises like Pokex Word for PDCGO, even, believe it or not. Just it, it wakes you up, gets your brain moving. I like them a lot. And let's go scope out that Regidrago list. So here's my early Regidrago V-Star list that I have been looking at and working around with. Now, Regidrago V-Star, of course, having the attack, allowing you to copy any dragon Pokemon from your discard pile without needing the required energy to use their attack is really powerful. Of course, meaning we can copy something like Gudra to like Giratina to Duraludon without needing those energies. We won't need to play Metal, Water, Psychic, Grass fighting. We just need to play the energy for Regidrago's attack as it copies those attacks. The problem with Regidrago is how do you really play it? It does require two grass and a fire in its attack cost. Not the worst ever. There are a few good grass support cards in the format. The main one that I think a lot of people kind of gravitated towards when Drago got revealed was, of course, Gardenia's Vigor, which allows you to draw two cards and then attach up the two grass energy from your hand to one of your benched uh, grass Pokemon. Or one of your bench Pokemon, sorry. The only problem with Gardenia is that it's not as good as Welder. Welder was very good, of course, with Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX, which is very much like Regidrago. Regidrago, Regidrago copies Dragon Pokemon. Mewtwo copied all your GXs. Mewtwo had Welder, though. Welder was very powerful because it not only worked on the active, unlike Gardenia, where it's only the bench, it also had a lot of good support cards like Fiery Flint and Giant Hearth. Grass doesn't have those cards, and that's the problem with Gardenia is you have to have the energy in your hand in order to make the attack work because there is no other way to pull that off. There are no other grass support cards. There's no Fiery Flint, no Giant Hearth for grass Pokemon. There's not even Viridian Forest, which would have been okay. So you don't have a good selection of uh, ways to get grass energy out. So I think just playing a straightforward Gardenia build just wouldn't be very consistent. The other problem with Gardenia is that the draw is really underwhelming. I mean, drawing two cards without, like, Dedenne in the format, it's kind of bad because how are you going to, you know, draw two cards, build up a Drago on your bench? How are you then going to get Dragon Pokemon in your discard pile? See, this is where the problem lies. We're just playing a straight Gardenia build of Drago. I think it's too slow, and I don't think it's consistent enough to work. So the way that I've actually decided to build Regidrago V-Star today was with Leafeon V. Now, Leafeon V has the ability Greening Cells, where you can search your deck for a Grass Energy, attach it to one of your Pokemon, and then your turn ends. So essentially, you go first, you can go Bench Regidrago V, Bench Leafeon, Greening Cells to your Regidrago, plus an attachment for turn to Regidrago, getting two energy on it. And then the following turn, you attach one more energy to your Regidrago, and then it will already be powered up. Now you're probably like, okay, that's cool. You built up one Regidrago with Leafeon. How are you going to build up another one? Because you got to do that over and over again. You can't end your turn. You only have one Gardenia within the deck. Well, we do have Dragonite. So this brand new Dragonite got revealed here. As you can see, Dragonite does have a powerful attack. It does 100 in 80 damage, and then you can search check for up to three energy cards, three basic energy cards, sorry, and attach them to any one of your Pokemon anyway you like. This is really powerful. Being able to Dragonite with Red Drago is insane. So all you have to do is go Leafeon to one Regidrago, build up that Regidrago, use that Regidrago to build up um, another Regidrago through Dragonite. That's how we start the chain. And the nice thing with Leafeon is we do get to play Leafeon at V-Star in the deck. So if we ever need to have either like a backup grass Pokemon or we want to have that V-Star power Ivy-Star as a free built-in gust, we have that option open too. So kind of running through the options, I thought Leafeon was maybe the best way to play it because you get the ability to build up a Drago really fast. 
and you also get an additional V-Star power if need be. This deck does have a few V-Star powers we can work with, which I'll kind of talk about when we get to that, but I thought Leafeon was the best way. The other way that I think a lot of people gravitate towards was Arceus V-Star. Arceus is not bad. Uh, the problem with Arceus, though, is just kind of like you have to get turn one Arceus and then, like, turn one Drago. It's too, like, it's not, like, slow or anything, but it's, like, it doesn't feel... Like, it doesn't feel fast enough, in my opinion. But certainly, Arceus Regidrago might actually see play. There's definitely potential for Arceus Regidrago to be a legit deck. Don't worry. But I think the Leafeon build was probably the one that I kind of gravitated towards the most. You could maybe try Regidrago with the Lost Zone engine. Also, with Mirage Gate, that also feels a little too slow. And also feels like sometimes you'll Lost Zone away important pieces to the deck, which you don't want to lose. Now, let's take a look at the support Pokemon real quick, I guess, before we get into the main meat of the deck, which is the Pokemon I chose. I am playing two copies of Mew. I am experimenting with Mew. Mew is a great Pokemon to lead with. Uh, you don't want to open up with Regidrago a lot of the time. Well, you can, but it's not as good because you don't want to take damage. You want to start with, you know, Crobat or Luminion. You don't want to start with Dragonite either, um, Dragonite V or Latias. Those are Pokemon you do not want to start with. So having extra, like, decent starters with Mew is nice. Mew can also help you find Battle VIP and Quick Ball, which are really important cards to have on your first turn, so you can easily get a, uh, Regidrago and a Leafeon on your bench. That's why we're playing two VIP in the deck, is we can go Mew for VIP and then get a Leafeon and a Regidrago down. You could even bump up the count of Battle VIP pass. I think two might be a little too little. You could even play three if you want, because it's important to get a Leafeon and a Drago down in one turn. I also got a one bit Barrel Engine in the deck for some extra draw. I am playing Crobat and Luminion too. Quite a hefty amount of draw cards, I know. Crobat's important though, because you do want to dig uh, a lot with this deck, because you need to get Dragon Pokemon in your hand to discard with Ultra Ball, Quick Ball, and Research. So having Crobat as an extra push to find Pokemon is good, and then Luminion can get you Boss, Gardenia, or something. Um, but the Luminion wouldn't be good if you didn't have the Gardenia in the deck. If you were to cut the Gardenia, I think you could also cut Luminion, but... Luminion goes well with the Gardenia. It helps when you don't have a Leafy on turn one or something. So that's just why I got the Luminion in the deck. Um, but then let's look at all the Dragon Pokemon we got to work with. Because there are a lot of options for Red Drago to work with. Drago, of course, copies any Dragon Pokemon. And there's a lot of Dragon Pokemon to choose from. And there's even some Pokemon that I feel like I might have maybe missed out on or maybe should have included within this list. Um, the first one, and the most obvious one, is Giratina V-Star. It's one of the best Pokemon in the game right now. Giratina V-Star is insanely powerful. It does 280 damage, and of course, you gotta put 2 energy on it to the Lost Zone. But I don't like Giratina that much. There's actually a reason why I'm playing Dragonite and Giratina. The reason behind Giratina is 280 damage is a nice chunk of damage to do. 280 easily knocks most stuff out, right? 280 damage is a nice, clean amount of damage to hit. The problem is... You got to put energy in the law zone, meaning that you're probably not going to be able to attack again unless you have another thing on the bench built up. I'm not a fan of the, I'm not a fan of using Giratina to get energy in the law zone. I don't think we're ever going to use Star Requiem. That's why I'm not a fan of like the Giratina total, but I still think you want to play it because it's still good to have so, like a nice big attacker when you need to do 280 damage. Another reason why I like the Gardenia in the deck is it allows you to accelerate to the bench so that you have another Drago on the bench built up after you do Tina's attack to knock something out. Of course, we got Gudra V-Star, probably the next best partner to play. It does, allows your Drago to do 200, and then your Drago will take 80 less damage, which is awesome. Unfortunately, you cannot copy Moisture Star, but you do get to copy Rolling Iron, and Drago already has 280 HP. Even, it's actually bulkier than Gudra, which is kind of hilarious. Um, so, Red Drago super tanky, and then, of course, you can use that tankiness to help you out um, a lot. And so, that's why we got the Gudra I'm also playing a Duraludon VMAX. It does have a Shred Attack. That also is good against other uh, Gudra decks. Not only is it good against Miltank and stuff, but it's also really good against Gudra in general because like, if you're playing against another Gudra deck, you know, you're not going to use, like, Dragonite or Gudra against them. You're doing, like, you know, 120. Duraludon lets you just go 220 damage to another Gudra, putting on a lot of pressure on an opposing Gudra matchup. That's why... Or even the Drago Mirror match, for that matter, right? Because Drago will also play Gudra. So, like, that's why the Duraludon is really good. I actually think Duraludon is better than Giratina V, because, yeah, it's good to start with. Tina V also works with, you know, the Gardenia, whatever. I think Duraludon is just better, though, because you also can't start with Duraludon, so it's like a free... It's a, it's a non-basic Pokemon you don't want to go... Don't got to worry about opening up with... And it also has a better Shred attack that's better against Gudra, because Shred does go through Gudra's effect. Uh, and then, of course, we got Dragonite V in the deck. This is an experiment on my end. It does it lets you do 250 damage. You got to do 20 to all your bench Pokemon. I don't know if I like it. Dragonite does also have a Shred attack, so if you prize Drought on, you have a second Shred option. And you also have Dragon Gale for 250. With a Choice Spell, you can do 280 and knock stuff out. 
um, which I like more than Giratina because the trade-off of damage in your bench is not as bad as, you know, kind of putting yourself in a situation where you may not have energy to attack with the following turn. That's why I think the Dragonite V is really important, though you probably want to play two choice belts, so definitely you could lean towards the second one. Because of all the attacks you have to copy, it might not be a big deal. Next up is the other Dragonite. This is arguably the maybe the second best dragon in the deck. Uh, again, that attack does 180, and you can build up your second Drago in the background, right? You go Leafeon, build up one Drago, use that Drago with Dragonite, and then Dragonite with your Drago to another Drago, build up another Regi Drago, and you can kind of, you know, kind of repeat that process. It's kind of like how Mewtwo Mew had, like, those Energy Accelerator attackers in the deck, too. And that's why the Dragonite is so good. And you just build up another Drago in the background, and then you got two Regi Dragos built up, and you're set basically for, like, most of the match because you can just do it again the following turn. When you lose another Drago, you need to set up a third Red Drago. That's why the Dragonite is so good. And then finally, we have Lati Ass. This is kind of my tech V card alongside the Dragonite V. There's a lot of dragons to choose from, and I thought Lati Ass was a cool idea. Lati Ass does allow you to do 70 damage, and then you are immune to VMAX Pokemon. So you basically hit with Lati Ass, and then VMAXs cannot touch you the following turn. There's quite a few options, and Parts where this will be very beneficial. Obviously, the big one is that it's very good against Kyurem VMAX and Flying Pikachu. So any, like, VMAX deck that uses just VMAXs can get hit hard by Latias and make it very awkward for them. Force them to fight Boss or Rope, or even if they play Rope, or even if they can find a Boss that turn. It's just a really disruptive card. 70 damage is very low. 70 with, like, maybe, you know, a Duraludon the following turn can knock out V-Stars, but that's not super beneficial. But I think the Latias is good. And if you play against somebody with, like, an all VMAX deck, which... You never know. You might need the Latias for that reason, and that's why the Latias is in the deck. Some other tech options to talk about. So the first one is Zygarde. Zygarde does have Judgment Surge. For a Grass Fighting and, and a Cullis, you do 40 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon for each prize card they've taken. So in the late game, if your opponent's taken four prizes, five prizes, however they've taken their prize cards, Zygarde can snipe your opponent pretty hard. I mean, 40 damage times to one of your opponent's Pokemon is really really good against like crowbats and luminions on the bench you can use it to finish something off that you've set up uh to be ko'd later on down the road and that's why i think zygarde is a good option in this deck though i don't know what you would cut though that's the problem there's not a whole lot of room for cuts and really dragonite and latias are the two most well dragonite v anyways are the most replaceable dragon pokemon but zygarde is a great late game finisher if they don't have mana in play pretty good there's also appleton that does 70 damage free special energy on all of your opponent's pokemon this is great against blissey it Allows you to almost basically just one shot of Blissey. So Appleton against Blissey could be very helpful too. So you can definitely play Appleton if Blissey is still popular. There's also Flapple that does 50 damage for each of your opponent's Pokemon and play with an ability. Not a bad option either. I just think that its damage output is always, like almost always either either they're going to play around it or you're just always doing like less damage than like a Gudra or a Duraludon. And that's why I don't think you need the Flapple. But I think Appleton might be better than Flapple. Um, there's also Flygon and Garchomp. The problem with Flygon and Garchomp is you have to discard all the energy on them, and that can be very awkward because you have to rebuild the Drago back up. Obviously, you have the Dragonite to do that, but it's just, you gotta move, the, it's just not as good. Though Flygon is a good option, I think Latias is the better anti-VMAX thing in the deck, in my opinion. But Flygon certainly is a good idea. If you want to try out Flygon, you definitely could. I just think Latias is, like, the better anti-V card. Garchomp is not bad either. Again, though, you have to discard three energy from it, meaning that you have to basically make your Drago have no energy on it, leaving it with no energy in the active. I'm not a fan of that. Sniping for 220 is very good. Good, but the trade-off might be a little too harsh where I feel like you, you'll be stuck doing nothing the following turn. So not really a fan of the Garchomp Flygon idea, but you can definitely give it a try. There are, there's a lot of, there's definitely ways you can make that work. Um, but in my opinion, I'm just not the biggest fan of Flygon and Garchomp. But I think one, both of them could be optional. I do like the idea of Zygarde though in this deck. So I definitely think you could maybe try to fit in a Zygarde in this deck somehow. Maybe even cutting the Dragonite V out of the deck for a Zygarde. Um, but overall, this is my early Reggie Drago list. I like the deck a lot um, because it's it looks like it's a lot of fun to play. Um, that's really about it. There's not much else more to talk about, of course. Quick Bulge Ball, Evil Incense, ways to find evolutions. Um, the switches are really good. The double air balloon. The two training courts. 12 energy seems pretty good in my books. Uh, you go down to 8 uh, grass, 4 fire if you want also. It's another option. Uh, I am playing 4 research because discard draw 7 is very good in a deck that needs to put Pokemon in the discard pile. That's why we got the 4 research over like 4 Marnie or whatever. And 1 Gardenia, 1 Marnie, 2 boss. You could try to bump up the supporter count a little bit. If there's other supporters you could play, you could definitely try to find more extra options. But I think 4 research, 1 Marnie, 1 Gardenia is fine. You could try out Roxanne in the deck. You could try out a second Marnie. Uh, you could try two Gardenia, three boss, something like that. But with Leafy on V-Star, I don't think you need three boss. But that's the list 
Um, I'm excited for Drago to come out. This is going to be a really fun deck, and I'm excited to see what other options Drago gets in the future, because, of course, Dragon Pokemon will come out in more and more sets, meaning that Drago will only get better with time, which is one of the good things about investing in, like, a Red Drago deck now. Even if, when it comes out, it's not as good, it could get better over time. Thanks for watching today's video on the Shovel Squad on my early Reggie Drago V-Star deck profile video. Let me know down in the comments below what you would change about the list, what Dragon Pokemon would you add to the deck if you had the option to. And uh, you want to see any more early deck profile videos, let me know, and I am glad to do more, because deck profiles are fun to make, and it's fun to actually build a deck early, kind of gets me in the mood for a new set release, and Silver Tempest is not too far away, it's less than, what, a month away now, so it's coming soon. Thanks for watching, check out all the sponsors down below as always, and I'll catch you on another video, uh, bye bye The Shuffle Squad is proudly sponsored by Atlas Collectibles, the best place to buy any trading card game product online. Visit atlastcg.com and at the checkout screen make sure to use code TSS12 to save an unbeatable 12% off your entire order. Atlas Collectibles will ship your product anywhere in the world, so make sure you're taking advantage of the 12% savings with TSS 12. And if Pokemon is not your thing, don't worry. Go to atlastcg.com and see all the other amazing trading card game products they have there to offer. The Shuffle Squad has partnered with PTCGO Store to provide our community with the best access to Pokemon TCG codes. They have codes available 24-7 instant email delivery, and you can save 5% off by using code TSS5. If you're a YouTube member or Patreon supporter, you'll have access to a special code that gets you 10% off. So what are you waiting for? Use code TSS5 today and save 5% on your next order of codes on any codes available at ptcgostore.com. PokeXWord, the best place to get your fill of Pokemon-inspired puzzles. New puzzles are posted every day and they recently launched a new Guess That Pokemon puzzle, which is a ton of fun to play. Go check them out at pokexword.com and be sure to follow them on Twitter for your chance to win a ton of PTCGO codes every month. Check out the Late Night Series Season 6, brought to you by myself, Zach Lesage, and the Shovel Squad. We're going to be running a bunch of sick events for the Pokemon community and they start on August 30th. So one thing you might be noticing here is that there's an EU time and an NA time. We have one at 12 p.m. Eastern, which works out to about 5 p.m. in London. And then we have one at 7 p.m. Eastern, which should help out a lot of players on the West Coast play in this event. That being said, we still have a lot of cool things going on. Expect similar prizing that we've had for other late night series events. Expect better staffing, Except, expect better tournament experiences. And of course, we do have a stream going up for this season as well, and I will be streaming the event on Twitch. That being said, we have the whole season up on the Play Limitless website. Late Night 51 all the way through 70 runs until we hit the, reg the Invitational on November 5th. So check that out, sign up today, and support Zach Lesage Events and the Shuffle Squad. See you there.